Irish football fan TV. It's myself, Paul Neal, and I'm delighted to be joined by Brighton Young Player of the Year, Warren O'Hara. Warren, how are you keeping? I'm all good, Paul. How are you? All good, all good. Just fresh from a little trip to Dundrum there, so um, I'm a bit oh, buzzed please. here. I have my coffee here beside me, so I'm a little bit buzzed on that. Um, how's your How's your morning been? Been nice. The weather's been lovely over here, so uh, been doing the same. A bit of, went a bit of running today, this morning, and then just been out the back really tanning, as you can see. Yeah, not a whole <laughs> lot of tanning going on here. It's raining. Nah. Uh, your native Dublin. So I, so I heard. So I heard. The family <laughs> told me they filled me in. Some things never change. But I said I'd get on to you. Obviously, you're after winning Brighton's Young Player of the Year, so congratulations on that. Thanks very much. But um, so I kind of wanted to, like, there might be a lot of Irish fans who may not have know too much about you. Um, I've been following your career closely since, especially since the channel started and kind of when you left Bowes to get to Brighton. But I kind of want to get a, a, a kind of full insight into your career so far. Um, so if you wouldn't mind kind of telling me what got you into football, maybe who was your, your favourite football that kind of draw, drew you to watching football and kind of yeah. we'll go from that way up. Yeah, so uh, I was a Liverpool supporter when I was younger, like I still am. Um, so I uh, watched a lot of Liverpool when I was younger. Obviously, Samuel Hippie, watched him a lot. Um, obviously, have Steven Gerrard, even though like my centre-back and he's in midfield, I was still like love watching him. Um, but yeah, that really got me into it. Like, just obviously, them start playing with your mates in the road. I ended up signing for my local team, Dingle, in um, in Cabra, Dublin. Uh, that was my first ever club. Um, really enjoyed it. Spent, spent a good few years there. Um, went to the NDSL Academy from Dingle. Um, then just really thought, like, oh, really enjoying it. Like, you know, I might have a chance to, to like, you know, play at a decent level in the future. Um, unfortunately, Dingle uh, wasn't wasn't. Uh, I think my team got scrapped actually back then. Like you know, my age group. So I ended up moving to Ashbourne. Um, played um for three three four years up there. Still with the NDSL side. Um, played with Ireland underage a couple of times in the nineteens, eighteens. Um, and uh, yeah, went went from Ashbourne. Signed for for Bowes. Oh no, sorry, I went to Kevin's first. About six, six to seven months played there. The they wouldn't forgive you if you if you didn't mention them. Yeah, I was about to say yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I went to Kevin's for six to seven months there, and then the under the seventeen uh, League of Ireland come in. So obviously Bowes, um, I knew Jimmy Mould then. Um, he he was uh, the under seventeen manager at the time. So I uh, went went with him to do. Um, had a good good season. He cut made me captain. Played there for a bit for a year. Ended up going up to the under 19s with Craig Sexton, and played there. Then obviously Keith Long would come to watch, and he'd bring me up the train and um, give me the the chance to train with his his force team squad. So um, yeah, literally just just progressed through all the age groups. Really didn't really make any jumps or skips. I was still young when I played for Keith's team and um, um, the force team. I think I made my debut when I was 17, 18. Um, against Pats and Richmond. What was um, that like, Warren? Considering the fact that you were you were seventeen and you have a manager like Keith Long, who's known for bringing through a lot of youth players and and trusting them. What's he like to play under? Yeah, like in fairness to Keith, you get you get me all the like. He, I was at been on the bench a few times, so I knew exactly what was expected. You know, I've that's been I was being a spectator basically on the bench of watching like I had Rob Cornwall playing, um. Just like he's playing still now. I had Dan Bourne back then still playing ahead of me. Um, you know, so was, I knew exactly what Key wanted and the, what, the, what the team needed from a young age, like even though they were a little bit older than me. So when my chance came in Richmond that night, uh, I think it was only 20 minutes. So, you know, just, I just literally just done everything I could. And there's a famous story of the, um, well, not really that famous, but Derek Pender played in the first, um, my first step on the pitch was a throw in, and Derek Pender turns around and goes, You're all right, gorgeous. And <laughs> from that moment on, it literally just calmed me down completely. Like, like I walked on, I jogged on with a smile on my face, which was which was kind of strange thinking that I should be nervous. But um, yeah, then after that, the next game was Sligo at home, and I saw me name the team sheet as I walked in. And Keith was, Keith was great about it. Like, he was just saying, You just play your own game. I wouldn't play if I didn't think you were good enough and I didn't think you were ready for the league. And we ended up winning that game 2-0. And then, yeah, went, went on to play 
well, I think it must have been there 15 games for that league that season and got me moved to Brighton. Well, see, see the way there you said about that, uh, saying that to you. I, I mean, th- these are small little things and obviously he'd have been in that situation when he was, was your age and he probably knew the You'd have been training in and out with him, so yeah. imagine he he would have known or kind of figured out what triggered you or whatever. So say it was clever on his part, I suppose. Yeah, it was just uh, so uh, like you know yourself. I'm sure you know Detzer as well. He's he's a he's a perfect he was a perfect player to to look up to in the league of Ireland. Like he'd always leave us on the pitch. So uh, don't forget he was the he was the captain as well. Like you know, and he was the he was the one we all looked up to. So for him to turn around that night and just say you're all right, gorgeous, as I ran past him. Even though I was playing beside him, because he would have been at right back at the time, it was just kind of like, yeah, I'm, I'm in good hands there. Like you know, the boys will look after me. And then after that, like, I think the next game against Sligo, I think whack up Paddy Kavanagh. We were on the team, the the huddle at another, the another gent, another gent, yeah, and another. Uh, it was a good role model to look up to, and he looked after me as well. Because in the in the huddle after before the game, he turns on, he turns around and goes, "Look after the young lads tonight, lads." His home debut. And I've turned around and said, "Don't worry about me, boys." And then the rest was history from that. Like you know, I've played a lot of games since then, and yeah, got me move in uh, to Brighton in January then. And in fairness, the balls they were they were unbelievable for me. Like the 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 confidence they put into me and like to reassure that like yeah it, you, you're you're good enough to go like everything was it was it was, was perfect on the on that ball's behalf so see see the way i just want to backtrack a little bit just to st kevin's and, and that um that kind of thing that they have going with balls at the moment and they seem to be producing so many good players at the moment like you see a lot of players even coming up through the balls team at the moment like it's kind of going a similar route to yourself obviously probably been there a bit longer than yourself but you know, there's players coming through there at the moment. There are a lot of good young players, and as, as you said, Keith's giving people chances. But um, it all kind of stems from that Ke- uh, St. Kevin's, you know, feeding, being, being, being basically a feeder club for, for Bowes and a really good one at that. It really is. It's turned out to be. Um, like, you've seen, I've seen a lot of on social media lately of like club signing, and like on the 17 year olds from, from Bowes and the 19 year olds from Bowes, St. Kevin's. and it's so it's obviously it's great to see, like you know, and it's obviously had to be more the past couple of years than from when I was back in Ireland. And don't get me wrong, there were still players like gone when I was that age. Like you had like Darrell O'Shea's that have been promoted from the championship, and yeah. um, and it, there's been just the, the list is endless basically, but definitely more now. And I think that's because of the the link up, obviously that they've had to have them with balls now. And there's a there's a pathway that if if all doesn't go that you need to go to England because nobody you don't need to go to England at that age because let's be honest I didn't I went when I was 18 I had my education and they got everything I just took me time around I wasn't I wasn't ready to go at 16 or 17 and I know like it's not a big difference but it made a big difference for me personally but yeah like there's no rush for it so it's a pathway for to say a young lad coming through and he's seen his mates who's gone on my my experience like I've seen players like like Darrell Shea so I went to West Brom when I was at Kevin's and I went to Bowles and he went to West Brom like, and it's just a little bit of oh I wish that could have been me like you know and at least the pathway is there now for lads to say well, well if I don't make it to England at this age at least I can go play in League of Ireland in the 19s or in the 17s and then maybe push for a fourth team well, I think that was a, a big issue they made this year with obviously Shamrock Rovers too being put into the first division because you know, uh, some of their players would, would just kind of fall away into a black hole and, and would just stop playing because once yeah. you get to a certain level, there's no if you can't make the first team, there's no other way to kind of go. You can you might get a first division club or something like that, but it's not it's not an ideal scenario. But as, as you say, but another thing is if you are going to go to England, like I think a couple of players have shown it in recent years that you don't necessarily have to be of a certain age to get to get over to get your chance. It's just about, I suppose, when you get your chance, it's, it's more so taking it, isn't it? Really, well, that's it. When I was younger, I never really got many trials. I never, I was never the lad to say, Oh, I've been to this club, I've been to that club on trial. And like, there was a lot of that when I was younger. And um, no disrespect to the NDSL league, the DDSL league, the boys who are playing that league week in, week out was always getting the the trials and things like that it was very seldom you'd hear an NDSL player go over to the likes of the likes of Brighton the likes of well, Liverpool Chelsea West Brom so yeah it doesn't really matter what age you get it's about taking the chance you got look I already went to I was on tri- I think Brighton was my second trial ever like and 
I literally, I literally was here a couple of days and I got the news. I was actually, to be honest with you, I got the I was here for two days and I got the news that he wanted to sign me and I was just like, I was overjoyed, like you know, and it was just, it was madly like coming home to me, to me family and being like, listen, I'm, I could be potentially moving away and. And, oh yeah, I was in I was in college in the time I was at DIT, and then I went to to the ETB course in Cabra, and I was just like turning around, and being like, yeah, off off to go, like I'm I'm going to live the dream. Where every young lad who wants to be a footballer, like you you can't say no really, and that that was the thing. Like it, it didn't really matter what age I was because I've got there, no matter what way I've got there. Like if I just because I'm not a sixteen year old coming through the scholar and the academy, I was. I was an 18 year old coming straight into a 23s team you know and trying to push on from there and like and I got that award this week which it was kind of like just a little time to reflect back of what I've, what I've been doing since I've, since I've come here and how much you've improved and it's, it just goes to show that like there's no rush on it and like kids like young lads don't need to be worrying about like oh, I haven't got this club and I haven't signed this contract and I'm still I'm about to leave school and there's no rush at all on it that's the only advice that I give to a young lad I think that's I think that's good considering yourself. You're like you're already young as well. You, you probably don't think it, but you're only twenty one. Um, like to hear you saying that, that that there's opportunities for other lads and the way you kind of as as I said earlier about the pathway you've kind of created from the Kevin's to Bowes, then yeah. to Brighton. A lot of people seem to be following that kind of route now. Maybe not you know Kevin's to Brighton, but they said tend to be going from Kevin's Bowes then to another club, and I think. As you said, since 2017, there's been a, a lot more players going over from from Ireland, especially um, Premier League clubs or Championship clubs. Seems to be taking the punt on a lot of Irish talents. Um, whether they make it or not is is kind of up to them, and see how that one kind of transpires. But yeah. Talk me through your move to Brighton and how that came about, and what made you want to sign for them. Was there any other was there, was there any other interest from any other clubs, or was it just Brighton at that time? Um. Uh, yes, I had. Sorry, yeah, I had. Um, I was on trial at Norwich. Um, I had a bit of interest from them. Um, before Norwich, I was with Shrewsbury, but I went straight into their force team for a trial, which was obviously a good experience. Yeah. Um. But physical, yeah, I imagine. Yeah. Well, very physical. Now, not much different from the League of Ireland, like, but just more like, not disrespect to the league, but just more athletes, like more. The obviously the facility was obviously a bit better than balls and like there was there was a gym on site and things like that and I think they're more so playing to kind of yeah like, the family aren't they really that was it like everything and I'm now that and to be honest with you when I was at balls it was a bit of the same you know like we wanted to win games and there was people saying like we need to win this game because I need the contract next year you know and then we need a good result and we need a good a good year and that that really toughened me up and it was a bit different when I got there but yeah about the Brighton move um. I had I had uh, the scout Leroy McCourt was his name. Uh, I was actually speaking to him the other day. Lovely man. Um, he he was interested in me. Got on to Keith. Um, trying to organise uh, a trial. Um, but before that I had um, Norwich lined up. Before that I had Shrewsbury lined up. So I went there for four or five days. Um, Paul Horse was the manager at the time. Um, I think he went on the manager switch uh, recently. He uh, he he really liked me. He said so. Um, he said he was going to inquire about me after the trial. Um, then while I was on trial, there I got a call um, to say that a train's been booked. Do I have to go catch a train from Shrewsbury and go straight to Norwich? So I was like, all right, then I'll I'll, I'll do that. So um, I've gone up to Norwich, stayed there for a couple of days. Um, Simon Power was there at the time. He was, he's he's oh, actually yeah. signed for him now. So I was actually I trying Simon with him. on the channel, yeah. Yeah, I was, I was actually trialling with him at the time. I was living with him. He, he, I think he was there for about seven seven to ten days at the time. So he knew a bit about it and he was just saying not to worry and things like that. Nice lad. Um, I think I, I think on my tour the fourth day, I've got a call said they were interested in me and they were uh, willing to offer me a contract. So as soon as that happened, um, straight back to, to Dublin. Troy was finished. Very happy with me trying to organise contracts, things like that. Brighton got on the phone and I was like, um, John Marlin actually rang um, Keith, I, I believe, and said, listen, what's happening? Well, I'm really interested in Warren, want to get him off to have a look. Obviously, things are getting a little bit complicated because I had Norwich knocking on the door. Brighton wanted a trial. Norwich was saying that 
we don't really fancy Warren going on trial with anybody else. We're really interested. Um, that went on for a good few weeks, if I'm honest with you. I remember sitting in the FOSS in the ETV course in Cabra and my phone ringing numerous of times of me having to step out, trying to organise, like, when, where am I going or what's happening? And trying to organise contracts. That went on for a while. That must have been at least three to four weeks. Um, eventually, I, I bit the bullet and I went to Brighton on trial for two days, um, literally just before Christmas. I, I think I left Brian. I think I left Gatwick Airport to come back to Dublin on the 23rd of December, which was like madness. So I, f I think I flew out the 24th and left the 23rd for a two day trial. Um, I, I went to watch a Brighton game. They played Wofford. Me and John Moore were sitting there with, with Simon Rush, the 23s manager. And John Moore just turns to me and goes, He really likes it. I'll speak to you at half time. Half time. Um, yeah, we really want to offer you a contract. We really like you. We're really, really interested. Lovely, delighted with that. Loved the facilities, went over top, 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 top draw. Like, couldn't believe it. It was, it was like a club at this magnitude with, with the facilities and everything that they have really wants to, like, interest in me. So, I was obviously, over the moon, got to fly home. As I landed, a contract comes through on the email. So, um, it was just, like, literally so quick. And I was like, oh, I was like, oh, I didn't know what to do. I, I think the first thing I did was. Got in the car, rang me ma like with me mom. I was like, Th "This is it, like." And, nice and Christmas present that was. That was it. Like, I just, <laughs> and then before I knew it, I was I was on a plane with all my bags in January. Then, like start of January, just but on just the way. Just, just kind of before you go into the what what was the Christmas like then? Because you knew kind of coming in from obviously January, then that you were going to be heading off. But it must have been a lovely Christmas. That would have been what two thousand seventeen. Or 2016 yeah, leading yeah. into 2017. 2017 into 2018. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but so, uh, that um, must have been a great feeling then, because you know then that you, you have this opportunity in front of you. You get to spend the Christmas with the family before you get to go, which is always a great time because you get to see so many people. Uh, that was that's it, like, you know. Yeah, like so we go and meet a family and been like, yeah, I got a good Christmas present. Like you know, I've been offered a contract, and I think everybody was just kind of shocked. Like you know, it, it was like. It wasn't more so a present just for me. It was a literally a present for everybody. Like everybody was delighted for me because they knew how much I've worked hard and I didn't like nobody. I never give up playing football for anything. Like no matter if I was working or in college, like you know, and I always played no matter where I went, like or what I done. So I think it was a big. Um, it was more to be honest. It wasn't just me. All my family always helped out. I didn't drive at the time when I was in Dublin, so I had to I had to get like lifts to train and. So obviously everybody chipped in, so it was kind of like a, it was a big accomplishment for all my family, is the way I put it really, um, especially like my close family. And obviously when I started playing for Bowers Force team, it was already down the road for me. Daily mode was handy, you know, so I used to get a walk or cycle, and yeah. it was literally two minutes, two minutes away. And like after games, I used to cycle home, see fans on the way, be like, oh, good game, Warren, be like, yeah, thanks. <laughs> you know, it's just, just, just madness. But yeah, it was very, very, very good Christmas that year. Yeah, and obviously they'd have been so proud of the fact that now you're going to be going over. And Brighton were kind of establishing themselves as a Premier League club at the time. Yeah, yeah. So Brighton, um, it was the second year in it, I think. It might have been the second. I think it was the second year in the Premier League at the yeah, time. Yeah, I think or, it was, yeah. Or the fourth. It might have been the fourth or second. But yeah, it was... Uh, it was you could feel I remember the first day walking in. I could, well, they, got, the they, got, they got promoted after the Euros. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it would have been the first year in, I think. Yeah, so I remember walking in and um, seeing, like, all the first team players and just being like, wow, these are Premier League players. Like, and then I was saying Duffy, and I was like, he's an Ireland international. Like, and I remember being in the dress, in the in the gym and uh, just just doing gym work and Duffy comes in and he was like, oh, you, you must be the, must be Warren, the new Irish lad. And I was like, yeah, and obviously I'm a bit like trying to act, trying to act cool, like, you know, I was trying to just, just go, just go over it. <laughs> but in fairness to Duffy, he, he was uh, very nice, very nice. Like, he made me feel at home straight away. Like, and didn't feel like I was out of place where I'm at all. Like, it was just like, just two chats between two lads. Like, and yeah, he was just saying, just enjoy the time with like hand. And yeah, it was just, it was, it, it was easy when I met Duffy. Like, and especially like, it was even easier when I saw it. And like, walked into a dressing room and I see Aaron Conley and seeing Jay Malumby, Dan O'Mandrew, uh, Des Hutchison, you know, and 
was like, Richie, Richie Tell would have been there too. Richie Tell would have been. Richie Tell was there as well. Yeah, he was in the. He was in. I've met him actually a couple of times, a couple of days after Matt Duffy, I think. Um, but he was he was lovely as well, Richie. He made me feel at home as well. For to be to be fair to him, but the dress room for the twenty three was the big one for me when I had like the lads who were my age, you know, and especially Dano who's from from Ballymun, like you know, he's literally. 10 15 minutes away from Cabra, and then Jay looked after me well, as looked after me, like they all chipped in, you know. So it was just well, well Jay had actually sent in a, a message to me asking who who looked after you when he came over. So <laughs> who, who was the one who really looked after you? Yeah, he looked after me, Jay. I give him that, he gave me lifts everywhere. He, he he was the only one that drove at the time, that's why because Dano and I didn't drive at the time, so he was the one that picked us all up. He used the carpool with him. Um, yeah, he looked at me as well. I say he's laughing when he says this. <laughs> yeah, defo. But see, but just while we're on the subject of those lads, I uh, don't think Dez is over there anymore, is he? No, nah, no, nah, he's not here he's anymore. Back in yeah. Oh, um, because obviously you'd have seen that clip that Dan and, and Aaron obviously put out about the Dairy Lee Dunkers or whatever. Yeah. Um, so it seemed like he's had, he's had a quite tight knit group. They're obviously Dano's back in uh, at Bowes now, um, and doing really well, by the way. Really well. Um. But you look at what Aaron and Jay have achieved this season. It's obviously been their first breakthrough season. Um, after the two-long tournament with Stephen Kenny, um, they started getting a, a real look in with the first team. Then I know Jay went on loan to, to Millwall, had a fantastic season there. But even at under-21 level, kind of made a bit of a name for himself and kind of focused on getting into the team that way. But do you take big inspiration to what they've done now obviously because you've been with them at the 23s and you've seen how far they've came now now they're not exactly first team regulars right now but i do foresee next season them having a really big uh, impact on the season next year yeah of course like it's it it gives you that motivation that you know like there's a there's a pathway somewhere you know and obviously jay jay had a bad injury when i first came here and if, it, like if you look back in the season he has from millwall if you would have asked him that a year and a half ago, a year ago even, uh, would you take 40 games for Millwall next season? He would have grabbed your hand off, you know? So, yeah. he's, he he became, he, he just showed what he could do. Like, you know, he, he's in the championship. Yeah, he wasn't in Brighton's first team. But, like, it's just it's just the pathway that you have to take because maybe the injury played a big part for him. Um, especially with Az. Like, Az worked his way up. He had an outstanding season um, when, he, when he won. Premier League two player of the year and young player of the year, you know, and he, he went straight into the first team and he, you see what he could do. He's at he scored against Burnley there last game of the season. Um great goal and scored two against Quality Tottenham. Goal, yeah. Quality like and that's what that's what he can do, you know, and you you train with these lads week in, week out when they were at the twenty threes and you can see you can see that they're hungry and they want to and they're always running and that's just what we need, like you know, and that's that's what everybody needs to do. Like, it's it's not like a a, a pick of the drawer, a pick of the hat, like you know. And you, they made their own look by by working hard for what they have. They they've been at the club long enough. They know what what needs to be done. And listen, they've gone and done it, and it's credit to them both, like you know. Yeah, I, what I like about the fact that Brighton seem to be signing a lot of Irish players at the moment. It just seems to be a, like a two lads are after signing there Andrew Moore and Lee Cavan after signing for yeah. Bray and uh, James Furlong is there and there's a lot of yeah. young upcoming players there coming through it just seems to be um, a real good place for Irish players to go like yourself and that but um, just on the fact this season you've obviously won Young Player of the Year you're playing with the 23 so what what is your kind of goal next season is it to get into the Brighton first team or the first team squad what is your goals, or would you be happy to go out on loan? What What are your Yeah, I think goals? um rea- realistically, my goal would be probably to go on loan. You know, um, listen, the 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 centre halves that Brighton have at the moment, uh, the the top class. Like if Ben White come back from Leeds, who's been arguably the best player in the championship, you know, at this season, you've um obviously Duffy sitting there, you've Donkey sitting there, you've Adam Webster sitting there, you've Matty Clark coming back from Derby, you know, so the the list. Of centre backs is and they just signed a uh, what's his name Veltman. yeah Veltman yeah from um, Ajax um so you know the realistically alone would probably be in my favour for next season um I I'd be more than interested to go on loan next season you know I think I've done my stint at twenty three is now uh, 
I think I've got up to the level where I should be. Obviously, the award kind of like put a stamp on that. That it probably is my time to go on loan now. Um, then again, like you know, you don't know which way football can walk. You know, maybe loan is isn't gonna come for me. Um, but let's just cross fingers and please God. But I'll be really interested in going alone for the next season to see what um I can really do in a force team environment. Yeah, because you know, when you look at what alone can do for a player like you spoke to her about Ben White, even Jay um at Millwall, like how much it can propel someone if they're playing first team football, even at a championship club, you know, um if you're playing week in, week out, Stephen's shown that he, he will give players opportunities. And I, I noticed he, he he does like to bring this up a lot, Stephen himself. Stephen Kenny, he uh, he likes to show the fact that before this season, uh, in the Toulon tournament, none, not I don't think it, too many of the players had played first team football at all. And then when you kind of break it down, how many of them broke through into yeah. the first team this year? Irish players. Um, there's a there's a good few in the in the Premier League, and then there's a good few in the Championship at that, and. From from the outside looking in, I'd say for yourself, it's a good opportunity if you did get a chance to go out on loan to be looked at and viewed at properly. Yeah, definitely. And going back to Stephen Kenny's twenty twenty one team, um, it's a it's a great platform. Like the Toulon tournament's one of the biggest tournaments at that age group, you know. And like I think the boys played Brazil and got knocked out. Like and you know, like you're playing Brazil. Like when do you ever when can you ever say that? You know, not many people can. Like in, in, obviously it's an underage tournament, but Still, it's it's a great it's a great stepping stone and platform to 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 play against these players who have probably from like the likes of AC Milan or Juventus or something. Or I think as played against a right back or a left back for Brazil who was from Barcelona, you know, like I think, so. I think one was at Leverkusen as well. There's someone there that was cost a, a big chunk of millions. Um, but you got to remember as well that our lads at the time were a lot younger. Because Stephen picked oh, a lot yeah. younger than, than 21 against yeah, his yeah, lads who were 23 or something, you know? Yeah, like you had Douglas Costa playing against Jay. He was at the signing for, from Man City to Villa. The season just gone and played week in, week out and kept Villa up. You know, like so the 21s is definitely a good platform. It'll be definitely something that I'll be looking to get into next season. I think I have one year left there. Um, but yeah, like I said... Under Jim, Jim would be the manager. Under now, Jim yeah. Crawford, yeah. I've played under Jim actually for the under-18s. Yeah. Um, um, so we'll have to just wait and see, but it, like there you go. Stephen Kane is now the, the the senior, the senior manager, you know. So a lot of boys are going to be chomping at the bit from the twenty ones, trying to get into that and trying to play as many games as they can in the first team, whether it be Championship, Premier League, League One, wherever, you know, because they know that Stephen Kenny has, they know what they got to get. Stephen Kenny knows what he's got to get from the likes of the Brighton boys, like or Adam Oya from Norwich, because he knows that they've been playing with them. So there's got to be a lot of competition, I think, for that. But yeah, definitely the twenty ones have been a great platform for the lads. Um and like you said, the stat is there. Like not many have played four team football and near that tournament and now you, I'm sure there's a lot more appearances. Yeah, I think I think the the future of Irish football is just very really exciting right now because you look at the, I, I keep talking about players getting brought uh, being brought abroad, whether it's England, obviously with Brexit now, you don't know what's gonna happen, players might yeah. go other countries or whatever but there seems to be a lot of um, Irish players getting spotted and scouted and now we seem to have the scouting system right and the coaching right the whole way up seems to be the same way the whole way up whereas before that's been missing I feel and now we're just kind of seeing the fruits of it the fact that the FAI will meet up once a month and they'll have a manager's meeting and the manager from the bottom the under 15s will go right up to the senior team and they all report in the room and go through who's performing well and stuff like that. And I think that's been, that's worked out well for players like Aaron Connolly or Leo yeah. Connor or these types of players. So I think next year definitely or the season coming, you know, you've got, you know, if you do get in there with Jim, you've got someone like John O'Shea who you can learn off as well. And yeah, it's exactly, a real like, yeah. exciting opportunity for yourself. And I know um you wouldn't take it lightly. Well, definitely not, like you know, and I was not gonna lie. Obviously, I was a bit disappointed not to make the squad last season because the boys done so well. And when, to be honest, when I first seen the squad, Stephen Kenny rang me. He goes, "Listen, he just wanted a more diverse centre half." And I was like, "Right, Stephen, fair play to you. Thank you very much for calling me. I, I appreciate." It. And obviously, I've been I, I was on standby a couple of times. But after watching the team play, like it was just it was just like nice to watch. Like you know, the boys doing really well. 
and like there was no real bit of feelings to it. But obviously this year I'm kind of had my eye on it. But um, yeah, I think me going alone playing first team somewhere will definitely increase my chances to get into this squad. Well, you're actually at a good stage now. Is if you do get a loan, you could be the one that actually helps that 21 team. You could actually still play a part in that campaign yeah, now. Yeah, 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 which would be nice, wouldn't it? It would be really nice. Yeah, well, Warren, um, I just want to wish you well for, for the future. I'm sure I'll be talking to you between now and the start of the season, but it was great to kind of get a, an insight from your own point of view and kind of see how you're developing and, and obviously what your goals are for the next um, season or so. So thanks very much for your time and, and coming on. Cheers, Paul. Thanks very much. Take it easy, Paul. I'll make sure to to let Jay know that uh, you're, he was the one that was looking after you, yeah? <laughs> I won't hear the end of this now, I'd say. Um, I've just got to do a little outro for the for the people watching at home. So if you like this video, drop a like on the video. And if you haven't subscribed already, please do so. Now you know where to follow us. And if you want to listen to our um, podcast, we're on all good podcast platforms. So don't forget to check it out. And don't forget to follow Warren. He'll have his socials above his head there. Um, and you can go and follow him. And if you're listening, where can they follow you? What's your what's your um, social media handles? If they're listening on podcast, well, Instagram, Twitter. Yeah, do you know your your handle though? Like Warren underscore um, Warren underscore Warren underscore O underscore Hora, and then Twitter is at Hora Warren. There you go. So make sure to give him a follow if you haven't already. Appreciate Cheers, so. Warren, and thanks very much.